it's a thrill to be up here and it's a thrill to see so many of you and so many familiar faces. Um, I've had an opportunity over the last three years to meet many of you in person. And uh, we're really excited about today's event. Uh, we, we, Erica, who, who runs this, made it very clear that our three personnel shouldn't be in seats if any of our guests are, are out of their seats. But guys, there still are plenty over here. Um, so firstly, thank you all for attending. Uh, we're, um, we're thrilled to see the growth. I'm going to talk about some of the numbers uh, in a little bit. But I want to start by thanking the R3 team. I've said this many times. Uh, these events, we, we run twice a year. Our last was in Tokyo. And uh, most events of this size, you'd use an event management company. We run them ourselves. And uh, all the work is done by our own staff, led by Erica Pretorius, who uh, wave Erica who is a tireless worker and sets an example for all of us. And the rest of her team, which includes Alex, if you're around, just kind of raise your hands, uh, Megan, Joanna, Steph, Frankie, Tessa, Zorin, and Sam. And then from our marketing team, Syra, who did a great job. I don't know where she is with all of our sponsors. Um, and she loves a shout out, I can tell. Uh, Chase, Catherine, Sarah, and Tiffany. Now, inevitably, I always forget at least one. So if I, oh, I'm good. OK. So then I also just want to just mention our sponsors really quickly. We talked about CR Platinum sponsors. Uh, we have gold sponsors, Crown Mooring and Microsoft, silver sponsors, Edge Verge, Edge Verve, Infosys, um, Interaction, even though it's spelled uh, I-N-T-E-R-X-I-O-N, and exhibit sponsors, Blockshore, Bloxian, Capgemini, DigiLedge, Exact Pro, Gemalto, Persistent Systems, and finally, our associate sponsors, HBE, uh, Total Banks uh, Solutions, and Tradewind. And they're all set up downstairs. So if you guys haven't been downstairs, take a walk uh, and, and uh, take a look around. And then finally, of course, I'd like to thank our engineering team. Uh, we wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be on this stage today if it wasn't for them, uh, led by Richard Gendel Brown, Mike Hearn, James Carlisle, and, and Mike Ward, who's our host today and complemented by so many talented technologists working at every level in the company. You know, I, I work here in London, and every day I walk into the office, I'm just in awe in what you know, we have been able to accomplish in such a short period of time. So thank you, guys. My hat's off to all of you. Um, and then, of course, most importantly, all of you, as the Corda community grows, our open source strategy, which, which um, you know, we've been pursuing in earnest for a couple years now, is really starting to pay off. We're seeing the community grow evidenced by events like this. So thank you all for coming out today and your contributions to uh, and direct, direct work, contributions through working groups, open source contributions, and the like. Thank you all for your work. Um, just want to say a couple of things about this event. It was kind of uh, something we decided to do back in 2016. Actually, when we first started the company, we held a couple of events. The first one was eight people attended, uh, which I hosted. and. Uh, lasted about three hours. It, it, it wasn't that interesting, to be honest, but uh, we kept going. In 2016, we had 140 people. Uh, last year, we had 350 for Dev Day and roughly about 300 for the cocktail party. Um, this year, the cocktail party is going to rock. Everybody's got to get there tonight. It's over 600 people, I think 650. And uh, we've had over 1,150, or we've had 1,151 individuals from I think more impressively, 458 different companies uh, register for the events over the next couple of days, and 39 very impressive external speakers. So we're really, really excited about it. Um, the other thing is I hope you discovered today, often we're not given the credit I think we deserve. In the early days, we made some, some uh, choices about our technology, which I think have proved very prescient. Uh, I had been working with banks and trying to implement uh, technology into banks, which, as we all know, is a pretty thankless job for many, many years. So, you know, we all talked about using technologies that had stood the test of time and had proven themselves. So we made some design decisions, which I think have really uh, paid off. The flip side is sometimes we're accused of being boring. And I think after today, when you see some of the work we're doing with uh, our, our post-quantum cryptology and zero-knowledge proof and much, much more, you'll discover that there's some really amazing technology uh, in the Corda platform. And I hope you all appreciate that as much as I do. And I think that uh, we've brought together here some of the most talented and innovative developers uh, in the industry to tackle some really tough problems. So anyway, welcome all. Uh, I will be 
back on tomorrow for an opening and a close. But in the meantime, I'll pass it over to the experts. Uh, enjoy the day, guys. We had a fire marshal issue last year. The way it looks, I'm so excited to see some of you jam back there. But when, when I'm done, I really encourage, especially all the non-R3 non people, to fill the 20 or so seats over here. Okay, so everyone, have a great day. And it's also great to see some of my colleagues from Australia and Singapore and Tokyo and that I haven't had a chance to see for a very, very long time. I will try to meet as many of you personally as I can over the next couple of days. Thank you very much. Uh, so for those who don't know me, I'm Richard Brown. I'm, I'm Chief Technology Officer here, here at R3. And I've got 15 minutes to, uh, I guess, welcome everybody and, and, and get this started. Um, so maybe the first thing to point out, David mentioned the word three years or the words three years. Um, it's actually three years to the week since we started the project that, that led to, um, to led to what we now know as Corda. Um, and I know this because in preparation for this event, I thought I'd go on a trip down memory lane. I'd actually go back to my inbox and scroll. And I've never deleted an email, so I scrolled all the way back to the very first emails I had in R3 to try and date the beginning of this. Um, and I know the beginning. It was 17th of September. September 2015, because right at the beginning of my inbox, um, sort of, I think day two um, or day one after our first ever steering committee of what then was you know, quite a small R3 consortium, uh, was going back in time, was this email from a chap called Richard Crook, who may well be in this room. I don't know. There he is over there. So this is all, it, this is all Richard's fault. So it just shows how, how prescient he was and, and how concise he is. So Richard you know, of, of RBS at the time. Um, sent this email after our first meeting, summarizing in the, amongst the, the, the small group of us who, who were there at the time, what the problem was we thought we were trying to solve. Um, and I thought it's just worth showing again, because this, is, this formed the basis of the architecture working group. It formed the basis of the work that led to Corda. Um, and, it, and it's guided our work ever since. And, and Richard nicely captured this um, based on the discussions we've been having. Um, and it, I think it stood the test of time, because it's effectively described what it is we built and what we as a community are using. So you know, uh, an enterprise-grade shared platform for the transfer of value execu and execution of logic founded on strictly and rigorously defined functional and non-functional requirements. But it was also amazing going through the history of this, just quite how quickly this came together. And I guess it explains how we now have so many of you building your businesses and, and building your projects on this platform. Because barely two weeks later, um, the, the, the group of architects who first worked together on, on, the, on this, this project from across the various organizations and banks who were part of this process, within two weeks of that first meeting and that first, vision, first mission statement, we already had the outlines of what became the Corda um, introductory white paper. Um, and if you look on that sort of second part of the vision, you know, we, had, we, we, we beginning even by the end of that September month, saying you know, we envisage a move from systems of record maintained within firms to authoritative records shared between firms. This idea of moving towards optimization of entire markets and industries rather than the duplicative overlapping systems that we have today. It, it resonated with me because, of course, that was the entire basis of the quarter enterprise announcement two and a half years later and, and the blog post that went with it. So really quite a sort of almost like a, a hothouse formative environment in those first few weeks. And then move on a couple of months and you get this diagram, which I know nobody at the back can see. But it's amazing. This diagram that was after two or three months of work of, of this architecture working group and the, the people in R3 and across the members, many of the concepts that went on to define Corda, they're already there. You've got state objects, state objects that evolve, governed by smart contract code and underpinned by legal pros. You've got the idea of a uniqueness service, AKA a notary that provides finality, that not probabilistic consensus. You have the idea of data only going to those who need to have it rather than full broadcast or inefficient channels and things like that. It doesn't have everything, it doesn't have the flow framework, it doesn't have determinism, no, no decisions have been made about whether it should target the JVM or anything like that. But the concepts here from November 2015, they're what we teach today in, in the Corda training. It's amazing how rapidly that came together. But of course, and this is the problem, that's just a vision. This, is just picture, this was just a picture on a whiteboard. And as people always remind me, you know, this isn't my quote, you know, vision without execution is just a hallucination. So there was, so there was a problem. You know, end, of, end of November, we kind of had almost got to the point where we thought, actually, we know what? If we could build a system that worked on, the, on this basis, sort of shared data, optimization at the level of a firm, business logic underpinning, um, underpinning the execution, with, um, with, um, but with a legal framework around it, all these things. If we could do this, we think we could 
could bring the benefits of, of blockchain to finance as it was then more broadly subsequently. Um, but of course, you need a way to, to execute. And the decision we really had to make was, well, now we know what we think it is we're looking for. Is there something out there that we can go adopt? Maybe there's something that already exists that we can adapt, or maybe we have to go build something. And I guess it was then that I guess we were sort of really fortunate in some of the decisions we made, because to figure out whether to adopt or adapt, we need some way to evaluate what already exists. We need to look at you know, what are some of the existing open source public platforms, can they do what we want? So we were very fortunate at that time to have a global collaborative lab led by Tim, who I think may actually be in this room, um, to actually evaluate all the existing platforms. And then probably one of the best decisions we made, certainly the best hiring decision I ever made, we hired Mike Hearn, probably one of the foremost engineers of his generation, to start what began as a prototyping exercise and turned into Corda itself, to take the input from, from the evaluations, the input from the architecture working group, to take these hand wavy whiteboard ideas coming from me and some of the, uh, some of the architects and actually turn them into real code to prove it could be done. And it's amazing how quickly this came together. You know, that was started in November 15. By November 16, this platform was open source, and, um, and, and the rest is history. Because once it was open there, the platform could be adopted, and everyone in this room could then start building on it. So it was really quite, looking back on it, really quite an exciting journey. The reason I mention all that, of course, is you know, that's how we got there. But that's, you know, that, that's, that's the history. You know, wh what does that mean for today? And for me, I think there's three things uh, as, as part of this, you know, this welcome statement I want people to take away with them. First thing is to point out quite how much people are now doing on this platform. It, it was only open sourced in November 2016. That's less than two years ago. And as I was preparing for this session, I was looking at the agenda, seeing what was being presented today. And it's, it's just awe-inspiring. We look at what the R3 team will be talking about in terms of the path to 1,000 TPS, the use of trusted computing from our partners at Intel, breakthroughs in, um, in post-quantum signatures from Costas and the team. But perhaps more importantly, the work that the partners and the people in this room are doing to build their own businesses, whether it's new business models, new, new mutualized business models with things like Cordite, enterprise tokens, whether it's the digitization of banking with things like syndicated lending from Finastra with Fusion and Lendicom, contract automation in oil and gas with Gil one, interoperability between Corda and Hyperledger Indy from OP Financial and Tieto. There are so many different things to go watch today. So I have really sort of like three things I want to sort of recommend to everybody before I sit down and we get on with the, um, the event. First one is study the agenda carefully. There are a lot of really high quality sessions today and they're running in parallel. So choose them wisely. If you've come as a group, divide and conquer and then bring, bring, um, you know, bring, bring your learnings back to each other. They will be recorded. Uh, make sure you download the recordings afterwards. I think my, my, override, my overriding feeling coming out of this event at the end of today is there will be more sessions I miss that I wish I'd got to than those I actually managed to get to. So choose, the, choose those you go to wisely. Go and learn something new. Second thing, and the, this is second of three, there's a really big advantage from hosting this conference in London, and it's that London is where the engineering team for, um, for Corda on the R3 side lives. So what I'd also encourage you to do is learn all the faces on this picture. These are some of the Corda devs. This was, this was our picnic after we shipped Corda Enterprise in the summer. Uh, pick out those faces, look for people in the red t-shirts. You know, the people who built this platform, the people who know how it works inside out, Many of them, most of them are in this room. So if there's ever, anything you ever wanted to know about how Corda works, anything that you don't quite understand, anything you wish was different, go now one of us in a red, red t-shirt. We're here to make our time available to everybody in this room. If you see any of us, including me, sitting in the corner on our laptops, grab us and tell us to either get back to the office or spend time talking to you all. This is the opportunity to get to the engineering team directly. But there's also a, a third group and a third point I want to make, which is Corda is not just the product of R3. Product is a, Corda is a collaborative, open effort with a huge amount of contribution and, um, and, and, um, and input from people outside, outside R3. People in the open source community in particular who've given up their own time, their weekends to fix bugs, improve documentation, and add features. And the great news is many of them are in this room as well. So what I wanted to do before we get going is actually just show you some of their faces so you know who to go nab. Go up to them, grab them, say thank you, and then pump them for every piece of information you can get from them because they know the platform just as well as us.
with that, let's get started with the conference. Thanks, Mike. Cheers. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. 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 Thanks.